Uh, this morning while Karen's making the coffee, I got my normal chores to do, but I also have something I haven't had in a long time. An empty Lego table, so it'll just get to beat it. We have a little more breathing room here, and we hope that we're going to get some pictures of Steve after he gets the Ninja assembled. But I got to go outside and do the battery chargers and have my coffee, and then we'll decide what we want to do today. Now I'm expecting, and we checked the weather this morning, I'm expecting it's really going to get cold in the next couple of days. So, well, I don't know. It's, it's just one of those things we always have in a plan around the weather and sequence up the day's work. We caught a break. We had a couple of days and uh, where it was above freezing for the whole day and we're back. <laughs> that didn't last long. But that's why I always think sequencing up a day's work is so important and having a priority list of what you want to get done every day. Well, anyway, it works pretty well for me. And actually, pretty soon, uh, if we get another gap in the weather, we can put some of those parts back on a motorcycle. The buffing is done. I think we have a couple more parts to buff, and then we got to do some headlights, and uh, there's probably a week of detailing, and we'll be ready for the final assembly. And I'm really looking forward to seeing that ninja in one piece, Steve. So, uh, before it gets too cold again, get that puppy assembled. Anyway, I know he's enjoying that build as much as I'm enjoying helping him out with it. That really was, that really was a nice job. And it's almost like my winter routine. Chop the ice, change the battery chargers, and go have a giant cup of coffee. And we'll be ready to go to work. We'll be ready to work momentarily. So the combination that's really worked well on this project and on Steve's, it's worked exceptionally well in fact, was the five star clear, that latest version. That's all the information's on previous videos. And then a good week of sitting up by a heating vent because again, our shop conditions are in the mid 60s at best. Sometimes, and when it's cold, it's even colder than that. But then, the, after that week, sanding with 2,500 sandpaper and getting out all the little chips and all the little nubs and everything. And then the final part of it, and maybe I'll do some of this today because I have this part. I wanted to show this in phases. This is the sanded out 2,500 part here. This is not sanded out. And this is buff. So... Because this is going to be a, uh, well, we don't know yet. There's a lot of unpredictable stuff going on today. What I thought would be a good choice, I'll get out the compound and try to show buffing out that part. And then what's going to happen? We have one part left. And once that's done, we'll be ready for other details. See, every morning I have to go through this in my mind. The reason, <laughs> it, things change, you know, and like the headlights on that fairing still have to be done. I still have to get the washers for the petcock on this. There's always, that's, that's the nice thing about a restoration. If you sequence it right, there's always something for a cold day, a rainy day, a nice day. And there's always that warm cup of coffee. Without that, this wouldn't be worth doing. So it's pretty straightforward. Once you have this done, and this is, of course, I think this is the, the part of the job that requires the most patience is to get everything flat sanded and get rid of all the little paint nubs, dust. And of course, our friends that have a, uh, you know, better equipment or and or a combination of maybe even having a spray booth or some temperature control conditions, this part of the job would go a lot quicker. But once this is done, and this is just labor, this is just like taking a shovel and, and mixing concrete. There's, there's very low skill level and a lot of very high energy level to do this. I, my feeling is I could train Miles to do this if he would do it, but not, not happening. But this part requires a little bit of finesse because this, the objective is to get this, the gloss up, but not go and overdo it and wear out all the paint. I only want to do enough of this to bring that up to a high gloss. So here's my feeling. I had a, 
a great day at Harbor Freight the other day. I went over there, I picked up two buffers, picked up some more of these because I, these, these are so inexpensive. And here's what I found really is not worth the effort. I want to leave that for later. A new pad, when you have new fresh paint, beautiful. But the next day, what happens, everything dries out. Now, I know I have tried putting this. They make a liquid to rejuvenate this, the, the compounds. Mm, Glenn had some. Mm, just put in a spray bottle. But nothing at this point, let's say on this job where we have literally hundreds of hours of work, and the only thing we're really ever going to see is the final, final finish. This is cheap insurance. This is this is like you make a, a beautiful uh, anything, you know, a beautiful house, but you don't put the sidewalk in or whatever. These are very inexpensive. I, I should have checked the price. I think they were $3.99. Then, of course, you get a 99% discount. Uh, I, whatever. It, compared to what we're spending in time and energy, this is my suggestion is never use the same bed two times in a row. And in my case, if I'm going to go buff out my car, yeah, I don't care. But, but this I care about. So anyway, then the new buffers, and I was luck, lucky enough to, uh, I got two of them anyway. I always get rid of this, I've shown this on a previous video too. This can catch on the part and scratch it and whatever. So I just take a six foot extension cord or whatever. That takes care of that. Once I get a brand new pad on here, now I noticed another thing. The new ones come with triple layers of foam. There's a real hard foam, medium foam, and a soft foam. So what happened is, the first time I used, I have two of these. I used the other one. And what I tried to do is just, just wear them out to where they make so much noise, you get a headache, and then I just throw them away. $12.99, it doesn't pay to get too crazy about it. But here's the nice thing. Let me plug this in. And it seems like of all the things we do, that's nice and tight. It won't be at the end of this job. Of all the things we do, the one thing that's that most people would really like to know is how to get that final gloss finish. Now, even if it's on a, a, a like in my case, a 10-year-old minivan, you can sand that finish with 2,500. And with this, in a matter of a very short amount of time, it's a brand new car. It's beautiful. Now, the only downside of that is if you get too aggressive, <laughs> some of these modern cars don't have a lot of paint in them. And I know motorcycles are really, you're really vulnerable if you're too aggressive. You, you can get that finish like I did my R1, but you're very careful not to go through the edges. And it's way nicer than if you didn't do it, but it's very easy to go through. So, is my suggestion. When you do actually do a, a part like we're doing here, just put on extra clear. In this case, we probably have five coats of clear all together. And once you let it dry and once you get it sanded, this is going to buff out beautifully. Now, this is, this is something I've had for a long time. I haven't used it yet. I was waiting for a new finish to use it on. What it is is kind of a faux fur pad that you don't use with any compound. Now, I bought this. I got this from Harbor Freight, too. It was it was in a, a kit with four or five other things, and I wound up, at, I had two of them. I wound up using one years ago, and with no compound at all. It really brought the finish up nice, and it's kind of a faux fur. I wanted to try it on a part that I can just go rebuff if it doesn't work. Once I get all the buffing done, and what I'll do is at the end of buffing all of these parts out, I'm going to try to do a, a little buffing demo with all of the pads and wheels and everything that I have, because I really think buffing out paint and polishing aluminum is one of the things most people that have a motorcycle or a model plane or a car would love to know how to do easily and inexpensively. And maybe we can help with that. So I want to emphasize and I want to say it over and over again because it's a very hard lesson to learn. There are a million ways to buff paint. Starting with you can just take the buffer and go buff your car out with compound. but Or your motorcycle or whatever. And I'm sure Steve is going to do his with the bike all assembled or whatever. But the, 
The hard part is making it easy, and then the really hard part is making it easy and fun. What I've found, and I'm going to be repeating this, but I know it's, it's a lesson I've learned over and over. Once you come up with a formula of things that work well for you, stick with it. This is the 2500 Merca. It doesn't, it's not really critical, but some of the other sandpapers, if you, there are rougher or grittier or whatever, we found this one to be real good. In conjunction with, if you can't buy this product, 8021 was the original product. It's superseded by this. A brand new pad, a Harbor Freight buffer, and, and always using a new pad. That system right there, that's worth its weight in gold. Now, you know what I always think that is? I'll go back to the, the you're a, anybody that's drag race knows this. You go drag racing. And you, you have to try five different tires. You take the best one that works. Five different carburetors, the best one that works. The five different uh, timing settings. And you go through this process, and at the end of it, you have a winning combination. Well, that's what I think right here, if you can get only one thing off of this video. This, to me, is my winning combination. It's relatively easy. It's straightforward. For me, it's fun. Maybe for other people, it's not going to be fun. I, that's, uh, that's up to you. But, but the point, I think, is this is the kind of thing you can train a relatively inexperienced person. You can watch a couple of videos, do some test pieces, or if you have two or three motorcycles, do the oldest one that, that needs a, an upgrade. I think this is worth watching all of the videos that I've put out with buffing and sanding and everything. Because this right here, what's in front of me, this is like the drag race car that's been developed over many years, and it's a winning combination. For me, that's my winning combination right there. And the clear that we've been using, and of course, anything two-part, wear a mask if you're new to this. But the thing you shouldn't be, you shouldn't be intimidated by any of this. If, if you've watched even my video, other people's videos of painting, and there's millions of them, they're all good. You can understand something. This is not rocket science. This is not something you have to be... Uh, I, would, I would not compare this to like you want to put a rocket on the moon. This is labor. It's like mixing concrete, digging a hole, doing roofing. It's a redundant... Once you learn the basic skill, you can repeat it over and over again. And in my case, I've been able to do it for uh, way, way over 50 years. But this is the best... And in conjunction with what I just showed about buffing, this is the best clear coat I've found. And I have, I have a whole closet full of ones with half a gallon. I never used the second half a gallon because I didn't like the way they buffed out. Another thing, if you, if you don't use your paint like a professional, is say if you're going to paint something in the fall and then something in the spring and maybe something next fall, keep the hardener. In the refrigerator. Make sure the lid's on tight. Keep the hardener in the refrigerator. That tip was passed on to me by Bob Brookins, and he is a, a world-class custom car painter. That prolongs the life of the hardener. The paint itself, I've used paint that's 15 years old without a problem. But if the hardener, I think, and I don't know what it is, I think the hardener does have a shelf life that may or may not uh, we, I don't know, but I know keeping it in the refrigerator, I've been able to use it when it's several years old. Now, another thing I do, I always mark the old one. I always put something up here. Which is the old? Which is the new? This is the old gallon. This is the new gallon. I always want to know, and in fact, this has the, the year on it, because it's, it's just silly in my case. If I have the product, a project I've worked on all winter, I want to use the new gallon. If I'm going to paint my lawnmower, I'll use up the old gallon. Or if I'm going to do something for a friend, I definitely want to use the newest stuff because I, I want it to be perfect when it leaves the shop. Now again, the whole reason for putting all this information, much of it redundant, much of it over and over again, so that if you have an inclination you'd like to paint a motorcycle, a guitar, a, uh, a model, a boat model, a model plane, at least you'll have some idea, at least some information that I think is useful. And, and I think in my case, and I think in a lot of people's case, you get a lot of satisfaction able, being able to take an old motorcycle. And, you know, a few months later, it looks like this. I think a lot of people 
really would enjoy having that. They would really re like to have this quality of stuff without spending a thousand dollars and then be able to say I did that myself. So pretty much everything I ever do, the first thing I do is do a test. Let me do that right now. New pad, new buffer. Oh, I love this stuff. I was even thinking what I'll do, it's, it looks like it's warming up out there a little bit. If I, uh, just for a test, what I usually do is every spring, I, uh, I pick a day that basically I go for a ride and then spend the rest of the day come home, park the car in the shade, and uh, run a buff and wheel over the car. And, and both, of our, both of the cars in my family are 10 years old, so we're trying to keep them in nice shape if possible. And I'm gonna do this both ways. I wanted to show this, do my little test in real time. And nothing totally significant here other than the fact, if you see how quick this paint buffs up from this stage on, I think you'd be encouraged then to try it. And one thing nice about having a new buffer, it's quiet. You don't need to put headphones on and uh, you don't need to turn up the uh, turn up the music in the house or whatever. But I have really been impressed over this winter with the upgrading because in the past, as I've said before, I've used a lot of different clears. Mm, don't want to mention any names. And tried buffing with 2000 paper even tried one time 1500 a lot of extra buffing work I wasn't crazy I'd rather do the sanding than the buffing that's for sure I know these buffers don't last forever and that's why I buy two at a time and as you can imagine I should be sponsored by Harbor Freight without Harbor Freight I wouldn't be able to uh, do this on the budget that I have allocated and I know a lot of this stuff is not quite as good as if you bought a uh, professional equipment, but it sure works for me. Now, if you see it in real time, no camera cuts, no, no fooling around with Photoshop or anything, then I know it's a lot more believable. And in fact, if I, if I was smart, I'd just get a new microfiber right now. This one's greasy. Anyway, if I could show that, and I'm not sure if I can candle it the way I want. So now I've got a couple hours. I'm gonna detail this out with that buffer one step at a time. Same way I do the sanding, divide it up into pieces, do this, do this, do this. And until one part is, I'm totally happy with it, I won't move on to the next part. As I'm doing this one little step at a time, uh, it's really coming right up. Oh, this is what I love. This is the part of this that you can really, like the cherry on a Sunday, when that paint buffs up like that. A lot of times getting in here can be uh, a little difficult with the buffer getting around the edge I want to try not to go through so I'll do the last part of this just by hand get in here by hand but I don't want to run the risk that I cut through because there's a high edge here here and I'll the flat parts of course no problem at all it's getting around these edges and all the edge along the front that I want to be really careful of but little by little that paint is buffing right out just a matter of time and patience Now we are conveniently about at the halfway point. Maybe a little better than halfway. We got to do inside the scoop and a lot of that I have to do by hand. And then the bottom, which is relatively flat, that should go relatively quickly. I'm trying to stick to doing things about the size of my hand. Get one area done before I move on to the next area. And so far so good. The, buff, the buffing wheel is behaving today. And there's always some, this is just a painting stirring stick with 
a microfiber wrapped around it, a little bit of the material, the 4C material, and this is going to take time. This, this is not going to go, of course, as quick as the hand buffing, but allow us to get all down in there. There won't be any dull spots when I'm done. This will this will just be a lot easier because getting your hand down in there, yeah, it's an awkward thing. This is just a lot easier. And because we used to, and maybe we still do, I've been out of model planes for eight, nine years. They used to definitely buff a whole model plane by hand. Now there's another trick I learned here that may be worth passing on. I've been, I've been trying with these buffers to, over the years to see how much pressure it takes to, to get the paint to come up quickly. And I found out that it's like a Dremel tool. If you just hold it and just a little bit of pressure, as soon as you hear the motor slowing down, you're putting too much pressure on. In other words, you let the compound do the cutting. And that's it's worked pretty well, and it's worked great on this job. This job, I honestly feel, is the best one ever, for me anyway. And if I'm able to pass on even a little bit of that information and inspire a couple other people to go buy a Harbor Freight paint gun, like a drug deal you give them a free a free <laughs> it doesn't work that way but anyway harbor freight is like a drug deal love harbor freight anyway that's this is a useful tool we're going to have to use it in these areas there's some areas up here i should have shown that before some areas where you just difficult to get your fingers this is a very handy tool and inside that scoop a last little detail by hand up around here is done now. We've, we're really coming down a home stretch here. This actually went quicker than I thought it would. The only thing left is the the white. I'll divide it up into three or four pieces. Be very careful over the decal. And what I really, I really think is one of the defining special parts of this job. I love that FZR, that that logo that John and I came up with, and John basically gets most of the credit. We used his computer to come up with it. Now, I always, I always keep in mind something. You could, if you wanted to, you could buff this whole thing by hand. It would just take longer. So, what I always think is, and I'm always impressed with it, is how good this very inexpensive buffer works. And for a hobbyist, now I would say, sure, if you have a body shop, you probably have the, uh, the the one that's ten times the price, but for what we're doing, and I think for what most of the people looking at YouTube are doing, <laughs> I think this is just great. I I never stop thinking how how nice it is not to have to buff things by hand like we did back in the old modeling days. Wow, they think of the towels I went through and the compounds and all that labor. Now you can take one of these. Now what looks like it's going to happen here, Karen was just down here with another cup of coffee for me. She said it's warmed up outside, it's actually over freezing. I want to take some of this material and see how it's going to work. Maybe I'll use this material in the spring. What I have is a 10 year old Toyota Sienna. And yeah, maybe once a year I get the bug and again I, I just use Meguiar's cleaner wax on a big buffer. I want to see how this is going to work with a little buffer. It may be that you could do the whole car with this. I'm, I'm sure you could, it just would take a little longer. Now there's no part of this I have gone over very carefully that I can feel the decal or feel the strike. And another exceptional part of this job that I think is just exceeded my wildest dream is that Yama Yellow. I was watching Bitchin' Rides and they were trying to match an orange color House of Colors color, and it wound up they needed 13 coats to do it, and I just think, wow, am I glad I don't have to deal with that. This this was three coats, covered well, and Dennis down at Gavin has the formula on the computer, so, and I have it here too for if I ever want to do, and I, I think what I'm going to do next year is I'm going to more than likely do a, a cafe racer out of my RD400. I'll want to make it this color, of course. I really love Yama Yellow. I don't know why. I just love that color. Well, I, this has probably been one of the easiest buffing days I've had. 
in a long time. Boy, that has buffed out nice. I, I think part of this is I don't think it shows on a video as well as, at least when I look at it on my, on my uh, widescreen TV, I always watch YouTube on a widescreen. Of course, I have bad eyes. That's the problem. And I don't have a cell phone, so that makes it an easy decision. So here's the, bad, the real bad deal here that I want to take this outside. I want to look at how it's going to look in the sunlight. That's always, see, in the shop lighting, everything, you see every mistake in the world outside, it always looks a lot, it's a lot easier to hide mistakes in sunlight. Let me take a look at this. Well, it's not really as sunny as I thought it was, but that Yama yellow is a beautiful, beautiful color. And boy, Dennis, Dennis worked on that about an hour in the back room, coming back and forth. Thank you, Dennis. Yama yellow. Hey, finally the sun came out. You, I'm not sure you, you can appreciate it. I was trying to take a picture of this five minutes ago and the sun wasn't out. Now you get an idea what that Yama yellow looks like in the sun. Oh boy, that is nice. All that hard work and I'll look back later today and look at how these parts looked when we first took them off the motorcycle. Three months ago, three and a half months ago, wow, it was a whole different scenario. I never thought it would come out this nice. I am so happy with this job. Now this is because I got done early and I think this is just for fun anyway. I'm not sure how this is going to work, but there's no point not trying it. The sun is out. I wanted to see, let me just wipe some of the dust off this. I wanted to see if this is going to bring up the paint the way the Meguiar's cleaner wax does. And it'll only take a minute and we'll know. And yes, you could do the whole car. I think this would be, uh, take some time. Hey, when you, when years gone by, I've done a whole car by hand. There were times I didn't even have a buffer. Well, you had those crazy electric drill things that uh, just a waste. Now what I always wanted to do, and I'm going to do it this spring anyway, I want to do the whole car with flits just to see if it lasts the whole six months like they say it does. But I'll do that in the spring. It's still just under 40 degrees out here, so I guess we're going to find out. I'm going to find out if it works. There's only one way to notice stuff, you got to do the test. You can't believe the people that advertise this, I mean they're Forget it. Well, I can tell you right now, this is a lot shinier than that by a by a ton. Holy mackerel! Even the dogs are howling with this shine. Now keep in mind, this is a ten-year-old car that's left out in the rain, the snow. Uh, I think you could see you could buff your whole car out, and the rest of the car. All full of little stone chips and stuff, but this this little thing, I'll, look at this, I can see myself in it. That's always the test, if you can see yourself, that's that's good paint. Yeah, that's that's going to work. Come springtime, we'll do a whole video on turning one of these old mini minivan, 10-year-old minivan, buff it out like it's a show car. It'll be a lot of fun. Boy, just a few memory clips to remind me. <laughs> Three months ago, this is what we were doing, slinging Bondo onto the fairing, paint remover, now look at us now. Yeah, when I look back at these old videos, and this is why I love having everything on video, day like today, I get done a little early, I got a little time before I got to run over and get the grandson, look at this, I'm looking, what a mess this was when I started it, but again, where are they now? Sitting up on a workbench, all buffed out. See, this is what you need to do. You have to have vision. You have to be able to see the future of what this is going to be like. Or else it's hard to do this work. And this is why we do it. This is what makes it all worthwhile. Oh, we're going to have a great riding season this year. I love that FZR. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video and, and thanks for watching.